plan at least to make great television shows. The plan of Lieber made crap. They had to fake the ratings. They had to fake the ratings. Hi, I'm Rachel. And I'm Matt. And this is... What one is this? Oh, the Dead Do Not Podcast. <laughs> A Lex Rewatch. Just a bumbling security guard in the great white galaxy. Till one day he was dealt a different card in the form of a key. This key controlled the most powerful weapon ever made. Now he had it by sheer accident, or maybe it was fate. Too many podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if we were doing Empire of the Vampire or Lex. Oh, that's a small ad. Thank you for it was a very organic way of saying we are um doing a horror season over on Strange and Beautiful Book Club. So if you like horror, um we're talking about horror movies and horror books for the next X why. amount of time. Oh, yeah. Long time. Yeah. Our seasons are uh also organic guidelines they're just guidelines i mean that's the whole point of being an independent podcast right is you can do what you want Mm -hmm. and here we are doing what we want second part about being an independent podcast is nobody pays you to be a podcaster (laughs) which is just lame honestly i feel like if i sit here for hours recording and i i edit for hours money should just like appear but strangely it does not so we do have a patreon um it's at strange and beautiful network on patreon i usually have a link down in the show notes so you can click on that anytime we have a free tier where you just get to see all my posts we also have a dollar tier which is uh hey at least you're doing something right and then there's a five dollar tier where you get to talk to us in discord all the time and we just had a watch along last night where we watched an episode of forever night together and we're going to start doing patreon only episodes for strange and beautiful book club so if you love hearing us talk and you want to hear us talk even more you can pay to do that. <laughs> um, and it benefits us. Yeah. You're supporting the network. So, and to all of our Patreons who have stuck with us this long, I just want to say thank you to all of you because I really do appreciate. Um, I'm a little inconsistent with Patreon. I'm going to get better. I am getting better. I have already improved, but I am going to be on a track of continuous improvement. So thank you for sticking through the time period when I had no idea what to do with Patreon. But in the meantime, we're going to talk about Season 2, Episode 5, Laugh Track. And this reminded me of, do you remember the episode of Doctor Who? I think it was during the Christopher Eccleston season where they have the satellite that does talk shows or game shows. And they make yeah, fun of the so. weakest link. They have like the Ann bot. And she, you are the weakest link. And then she yeah. like zaps people. And you think they're getting evaporated. But it turns out they're getting teleported and turned into Daleks. Ah. And that's when she does the thing where she looks into the time vortex and Rose becomes temporarily all powerful. Right. And she just disintegrates all the Daleks and then creates Captain Jack Harkness. Yep. Yeah, because she brings him back. But it's not a make him exactly as he was like... I bring life five minutes is what before she says. he died. Yeah. It's make him alive from a perspective of ultimate power. Yeah. And, yeah. And it's a game show satellite with high stakes. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I know that one. I think this is actually older than that. Because the Christopher Lex's, Eccleston yeah. season is that like was 2005 when it yeah, rebooted. Yeah, real, real early. Yeah. So we start in an asteroid field. And we're doing a pew pew space fight in an asteroid field. Pew pew pew. 
pew, 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 pew. Random. I mean, Random that's, civilization. That was a synopsis of like the opening yeah. of this one. <laughs> um, one ship gets hit, it crashes, and then the guy's like, you're about to be canceled permanently because you faked the ratings on your poetry channel, you culturalist bastards. <laughs> okay. Turns out they had like a ratings war. And the ratings war turned into an actual war. And There's two planets in the same solar system, probably. Yeah. And they, I don't know. This is had, a reference. Do you remember the ratings wars where, like, Sweeps Week, they would all, all the networks would compete to get the most viewership? Vaguely. Well, that was a thing at one time when they were just a few networks and you would compete during sweeps week to try to get as much viewership as possible because that's how you determined like what shows got kept and how much funding you got and and how much whatever, you could charge advertisers. Yeah, and how much you could charge advertisers. And this is a commentary on that. Probably the best way to translate this to someone who wasn't around when there were like five channels is it's like Netflix and Hulu would be competing to see how many subscribers they could get, and then mm -hmm. they actually went to war, and then they blew up each other's planets. And this feels like the second most blatant commentary episode so far. You know what this reminded me of? There is an episode of Forever Night, and it is... On reality TV? No, it's not on reality TV, and it's not False Witness. It's the other one, the one where Stone Tree's buddy's wife kills a guy... Dead Issue. Dead Issue. Thank you. Can never remember the title of that episode. And you're like, oh, it's like a 30-year-old television episode. Why would you need to remember the title? And I'm going to tell you, it's personal pride. So Dead Issue is an episode of Forever Night where there is a lot of commentary that happens during the episode that really makes you feel like they are reacting to the criticism of critics at the time. Like they're watching oh, a yeah. porn episode. They're watching like a, there's a moment where they're watching this porn video in the police pl precinct, of course, and they turn it off and Skanky, one of the characters is like, well, I felt like it was derivative. I felt like it, the plot lacked, you know, all the purpose. things the contemporary audience might have said about Forever Night yeah. at the time. Right. Yeah. And if it really and then they added like a bunch of characters and it's the only episode where we ever talk to any of the secondary characters and give them names. Mm -hmm. And it feels completely different stylistically from all other episodes. And it really felt like they were complaining that the cast was too small and the show was derivative and blah, 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 blah. And they were like, oh, OK, here, how about this? Here you fucking go. And it's just a middle finger episode to all of the critics. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what this felt like. Like, yeah. this is what people might have been saying about Lex at the time. And they were like, oh, okay. Yeah, you want to go? Let's fucking go. Let's go. And it's like, what is most important? Is it the people? Is it the ratings? And it it's a good, co it's a good commentary. Like, I really yeah. enjoyed it. But that's what it felt like. Because we end up chasing each other around this tiny little planet in its TV world. It's like they terraformed an asteroid just to be one giant set. And it might have been like Disney World at one time where these were open shops because there's billboards playing static everywhere as if this used to be like a set tour. Do you want to go tour the set? Right. And one of them is the last living Liberian and one of his is the last living Lesterian. Yeah. So the same thing. Anyway, but... Lester and Lieber were the planets. Yeah. Uh, Jeffrey Hirschfeld... Paul Donovan and Lex Gigeroff are credited as the creators of Lex. And it turns out they also guest star on a bunch of the episodes. So well, this Jeffrey one... Hirschfeld is the voice of 790. Right. In every episode. Yes. But Lex Gigeroff has a whole bunch of just like cameo roles almost. Yeah. Well, he wrote this episode right. and he guest stars in this episode. And I think he directed this episode too. Yeah. And Jeffrey Hirschfeld is the voice of 790, but he was also P.T. Bando in yes. Leica. Yeah. So I just want to point that out. And that then I think Paul Donovan wrote most of the episodes, but he doesn't like to... I just I love know, how involved they stayed portray with Portray the show. You know, they all sat around and they either got real drunk. They got messed up on a substance, right? And they were like, what if we had Star Trek, but like with sex and shit? 
and like with the people, blackjack and hookers and like the exactly <laughs> <laughs> and like the people weren't like the best people but they were like cool and like one of them was just like a janitor or some shit yeah man let's have like the <laughs> that's exactly how it went down and then they just stuck with it because they wanted to make sure that their creative vision was never compromised and i appreciate that so the Liberian guy crashes and he ends up tearing like the gun. He just manhandles the gun off of his ship and they, it doesn't, it, they shoot each other. Whatever, down. It's dramatic. Yeah, it's dramatic. He's like, your crap shows never rated. Your crap planet is destroyed. And now your crap life is about to end. And I was like, oh, I like that line. <laughs> and they end up shooting each other down. And the Listerian guy crawls to the bank of TVs and they're shouting at each other about ratings and the guy goes, a commercial on Liber was more entertaining than an entire network on Leaster. Okay. Was it worth faking your ratings and starting a war that destroyed two planets? Was it worth it? And the other guy's like, no, you're the one who faked the ratings. They're so just accusing each other of faking yeah. the ratings. And this, you'd think this is like a conflict we're going to solve. It's not. It's not at all. And... He's like, okay, well, at least you're going to die now, and I'm going to die too, and it's all going to be over, but I won because you admitted that you faked the ratings. The other guy's like, oh, okay. And so he ends up uploading a video to the screens to play for all time. On repeat. On repeat. Let it be known for all time that there used to be two planets in this system. The dead... Uh, oh, that was just me reading my notes. The dead Lieber Lister. and Leister. Leister. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he's like, yeah, no, let there be known for all time. There used to be two planets in the system and that Leaster was way better than the other guy. They faked their ratings and that's why they're worse than us. We had the best TV of all time. The end. And it just plays on repeat, but he can, nobody can stop it because they're now both dead. Right. Every, everybody in both civilizations is dead. So then we cut to the Lex and 790 is flipping through channels. Yeah. On TV, TV, whatever. Yeah. They're viewing and we, screen. And we get a clip of this video that the guy uploaded about yeah. Leaster and Lieber, blah, blah, blah. And then we move on to other things. And I thought, oh, I I would not be surprised if that entire like intro scene was just a throwaway just to have 790 be flipping through channels and see it. And we have some context on where that video came from. But like 790 doesn't. Yeah. And then we just proceed on with a completely different plot. And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> well, I mean, they end up going to TV World. Oh, oh, you were thinking it was going to be I like the guy I... that gets squished? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I am here to save my planet. Okay. Just dies. Um, It's so that we know the stakes, but they don't know the stakes. Yeah. Because they, well, they do though, because they get this transmission that's like, there used to be two planets in the system and we all blew each other up because TV was that important to us. And then it cuts to like, hey, come visit TV world. You could be on TV. And they're like, oh my God, we could be on TV. And they ignore the, entire, the whole entire rest of it. <laughs> so they go to this game show planet. And of course it's tiny and the Lex is really huge. And 790's like, can't we just blow it up? It looks kind of gross. Like it looks on sanitary can we just destroy it and then stanley and zev look at each other and smile like oh yeah this is not going to be like the love liner all over again this is going to be a successful jaunt off of the lex they have never left the lex where they didn't almost die but sure let's go ahead and do that they smile at each other as if it's a joke and then when stanley looks away he's like oh i'd really rather blow it up just like 790 wants to yeah they're they're only going along because Zev is kind of bullying them into it. Well, they're like, well, the hot chick wants to go. So 790 will do anything Zev wants to do. And Stanley is trying to be a good friend because he's probably hoping that friendship will develop into something else. So 790 and Stanley uh, follow Zev because Zev is really just desperate to see new people. And Stanley has met new people and he knows they suck. And so he's over this new people thing and would rather just stay on the ship. But it's cool. So Stanley tries to convince 790 to talk Zev out of this by saying that they could all die. And 790's like, no, I really agree. I don't think we should be on here. And Zev's like, what do you have to lose, Stanley? And he goes, my life. And 790 goes, I changed my vote. I want to go to the planet. Because <laughs> he could lose his life. He knows how keen Stanley's self-preservation instincts are. And if Stanley is feeling threatened... There's probably something to it. Yeah. 
Right. But if it means Stanley might die. Then okay. Then maybe it's worth it. But Zev's like, well, it's two against one stand and we're already in the moth. So we're already going. So they land in the square with the dead bodies. And you would think that this would actually turn them off from continuing to venture around this post-apocalyptic dead planet where everyone died. But they're like, oh, okay, well. That's interesting. Look, there's dead bodies, Stan. I wonder if they're part of the attraction. And then, Okay. Uh, one thing about this. They are bare skeletons. Yeah. What removed the flesh? Time. That would mummify them. I don't know. Maybe they have maybe been exposed to the elements. And stuff. Yeah, maybe there's enough weather mm. and they're out. I, I get what you're saying. This is like a homeostasis planet because it yeah. was like a created asteroid. So I don't know. But I mean, there's enough bacteria here. Yeah. That over time it could have eaten uh, the flesh. I'm just wondering because we don't see any insects or there could be critters mice. or anything. There could be. I don't know. doesn't matter. <laughs> it, it it hints at something more sinister. Yeah. Or it just looks cooler if they're skeletons. It looks cooler if they're skeletons. And it's Plus, they already had a bunch wise. of skeletons in the prop room. They just brought a couple of skulls out. It's fine. Yeah, they don't have to make a mummified body. Right. I mean, they don't They don't have very many of those, but they've got a plenty of skeletons from the when we killed everybody in the entire universe part. Yeah. Yeah. So at first, Stanley doesn't get out. Zeb gets out and takes 790. And she's like, you coming, Stan? And he's like, yeah, fucking right. All right, fine. I'll come. He follows after her. And then we get a transmission on the screen. We never see that uploaded commercial again that says that there used to be two planets and that one of them was better than the other, but now they're all destroyed. Right. That that whole plot line is pretty much done. Now that we've seen the skeletons, we don't need to talk about it anymore. And so this commercial comes on the screen and it goes, welcome to TV world. Ready for some fun? I'm CG. Uh, Guess you want to be on TV or you wouldn't have paid the affordable fee to be on TV world. Totally affordable. Totally affordable. I'm sure. Just like it's affordable to go to Disney. It's not. It's not at all. So he promises to match them with a game that they will enjoy and that will make for good ratings. And the better the ratings, the better for you, which isn't ominous at all. This is going to turn out fine. Right. And Stanley goes, what do you think that is? So 790 replies, it's an insincere promotion designed to entertain planets that are now clearly destroyed. Thank you, 790. That was a perfect synopsis of exactly what that was. And yeah. Zev's like, oh, it's designed to entertain? Oh, <laughs> say less. <laughs> I want to be entertained. <laughs> I like entertainment. So Zev's all in, even though the face of CG goes, some players may fail to have high ratings and will become permanent members of our studio audience. And Stanley goes, wait. What if it's a trap? What do you think is in there? And she just goes, fun, Stanley. Just like he said. I grew up in a box. I've got a lot of experience to make up. And this kind of reminds me of the Tenth Kingdom. Yeah. Maybe because I want to watch it again. And when they're sitting in Snow White's cabin and there's Wolf, who is the best character in the entire series. Yeah. And Victoria, who is... A character in the series. And she's like, "Uh, you know, what is it like here? What do you mean? It just seems like everything ends horribly. And he goes, yeah, we either all live happily ever after or we die of horrible curses. Because it's like fantasy world. It's like our, all of our Our fairy tales, fairy tales come from there. And she's like, oh, that really sucks. And he's like, yeah, I mean, that's how it goes. And that kind of feels like the world of Lex. Either they're fine or they're about to die of something horrible. And there's no in between. Mm -hmm. There's no just, well, that was not fun. We didn't enjoy our stop. I guess we could get back on the Lex and leave. It's like either you're going to die from it or you're on the Lex and there's no in between. And I really feel like at this point, Zev should have learned to listen to the voice of Stanley because Stanley is the voice of experience. Of all of the people on the ship, Stanley has the most life experience. Yeah. Kai is 2,000 years old, but he's been asleep a lot of that time. And then when he does wake up, it's very specifically to go and kill somebody. Prior to that, he was a a fighter pilot, basically, yeah. for the Brunin G. Stanley has been captured, tortured, imprisoned, 
uh, escaped, escaped, captured, tortured, captured again, imprisoned, escaped, captured, tortured, per- lured his escaped. torturers in and killed them. I really feel like we should give Stanley a lot more credit at this point, And we're just not. We're like, oh, Stanley, fuck Stanley. He doesn't know what's going. Stanley is the only one that usually knows what's going on. 790 does, but his judgment is clouded by his love for Zev. Yeah. Stanley knows, and Stanley likes Zev, but Stanley doesn't like Zev as much as Stanley likes Stanley's still alive. So listen to Stanley. That's my mem- my motto for the rest of this show, but we're not yeah. going to, of course, because Zev immediately goes in and it's like, oh, you've chosen to be on Boy's World. And she has 790. But it won't let 790 in because it says only one role is available to cast in each show. So she tosses 790 to Stan. She's like, here you fucking go. And then she heads into the game. No questions. Just, okay, I'm ready for a new experience. And then 790 is like, Tweedle, put me in boys' school immediately. Because he's trying to follow Zev. So Stanley does try to walk in. But it buzzes at them again and is like, sorry, only one role is available to be cast at a time. You have to wait for this episode to end before you too can play. So Stanley's like, okay, there's only one thing to do. And that's to walk around while Zev is in there. Yep, wait for her to come out. But this isn't the only facility for experiencing your own uh, success as an actor in a hit show. Yeah, so they walk past another star. And it's for talk time. And Stanley's like, wow, 790, that's perfect for you. And so he just tosses him in. You're always fucking talking. And then he keeps walking. 790's like, no. (laughs) (laughs) Like, we learned nothing from last time, but it's fine. It doesn't matter. You know what? This is definitely not the love liner all over again. No, this is definitely, definitely not the same set of steps as got us into trouble in the love liner. Well, we don't get... We don't get the plot line of somebody trying to take over the Lex this time. You're right. We don't. But we do all go into separate doors and then all almost die based on these choices. Yeah. So Stanley is walking and he's like, my God, fucking every time with you, Zev, every time we go through this. We do. It's correct. He's not wrong. And she doesn't learn a thing. Also correct. Also correct. And then Stanley walks by girl time and he starts to walk past it. Uh, yeah, Girls World, I think. And he, no, it's Girls Time. Girl Time. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he starts to walk past it and then he's like, "Well, I mean, if everybody else is in, I should probably go in." Cuz of course he does. Of course. Although he at least thinks this could end badly, but I'm going to do it anyway. And yeah. then he goes in. So he opens the door and a bunch of shit falls on him, like there's a bucket over the door, and then the studio audience laughs because of course this episode has a laugh track. Of course. It's literally the name of the episode. I don't watch a lot of shows that have laugh tracks. I don't think I've watched a show that has a laugh track since Golden Girls. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It's really funny. We don't really make them anymore. Yeah, where they not... would have a can. Um, I don't know if sitcoms still exist or not. They do. Yeah. No, there are sitcoms. Like, there um, are sitcoms. What's the one that everybody always tells us we would really like? And I'm never, oh, ever going to watch it in my Big entire Bang world. Theory. Big Bang Theory. I think that one has a laugh track. I think it has a studio audience. We don't do a lot okay. of laugh tracks. We do a lot of studio audience. If you don't know what a laugh track is, they would literally have a recorded laughter that you would use in response As the to punch jokes. punchline to a joke. Yeah. As if someone was reacting to the joke, like a studio audience was reacting to the joke without actually having a studio audience. So then you could laugh along with the audience. Yeah. Even and so though, then solo TV viewing became a group experience. Right. And sometimes there was an actual studio audience and sometimes there was literally just like a button. Push the button, play the laughter for a minute, turn it off. So this woman with like a pink wig walks around the corner and she's like, who is it? And he goes, Stanley Tweedle. And then we get more laugh tracks. And then her, <laughs> her flimsy robe gets like yanked off. Yeah, her bathrobe gets stuck and she's like, oh. And so she takes it off and now she's just in a skimpy bikini. I thought you were the landlord, Mr. Beetle. Who I think is the guy played by the creator. What's, Mr. Beetle. Okay. Yeah. 
If I was the landlord, you wouldn't have to pay rent, is what Stanley says. <laughs> then he goes, I'm Stanley Tweedle, captain of the most potent spaceship of all time. <laughs> I'm so glad he switched up the line. Nice remix. I like yeah. it. And she's like, oh, we need a new roommate. And he goes, oh, do you have any openings? <laughs> <laughs> so this is off to a good start. He do- he starts Stanley out strong. just being horny. Yeah. yeah. And then we cut to a meter, and there's a meter that either goes between happy face and sad face, depending on how the studio audience is reacting. And then we get ominous music, like, uh-oh, there are stakes. Yep. And so at this point, I'm wondering, what is the studio audience? Like, what is observing the show right. to determine the rating? Right. And I... Th- I figured, well, this is like a long dead civilization. They probably have some kind of computer system monitoring the show. And there's like weird rules, like maybe unintuitive rules for what, what results in a good rating and what results in a bad rating, but it's way worse. I thought they were all going to get bad ratings because there was nobody to watch the shows. Yeah, that I figured they were all going to get bad ratings regardless of what they did. Yeah. Because the system is ultimately failing. Right. We don't. And we're about to find out why. Because we zoom out and we see these screens as if someone is watching the show. And then we pan over to another screen. And that's how we transition to where Zev is. And she's teaching a boy, a school full of giggly, horny boys. And she's like stroking this ruler. And she's also being horny and getting good ratings. Right. And she goes, I'm a graduate of the wife bank and I'm going to start with simple teasing, then move on to basic squeezing and then end up in advanced pleasing. And to everything that she says, the laugh track responds and the android boys are like, me. <laughs> It's honestly my worst nightmare being in a classroom full of like teenage boys that are like, hee 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 but she's playing it off really well. Well, because they're all adult, like fit, attractive yeah, they men. Are, they are teenage boys in the way that we used to cast teenage boys. Like if you watch Grease, all those people <laughs> are clearly in their 40s. They are so old. Uh, early 30s. They are not teenagers is they what they are. are. Absolutely and, not teenagers. Yeah, I remember watching that movie and being like, oh, yeah, she just wants to go to beauty school. That's really sad. And then you watch it now and you're like, why are you 35? Why are you attending this <laughs> high school? I don't understand. But one of them says, when do I graduate? And she goes, do you want to take an oral exam right now? <laughs> she ends up getting a 96 rating. And they said she qualifies for primetime exposure. Because they shut everything down. And she's like, no, no, go back. I was having fun. Let's keep doing that. And so they get turned back on. And one of them in the back starts glitching. Because they're androids. Right. And when he stops, she goes, I get that a lot. And then it starts laughing. Everybody starts laughing again. And then we do the screen transition back to Stanley. And he's flanked by these two women in very skimpy bikinis. And they're like, are you firm? He's like, yeah, I can, I can be pretty firm when I need to be. And they're like, he was doing well for the first few sentences, but then he starts to get self-conscious. Yeah, because they're like, are you sensitive? And he's like, parts of me are very sensitive. And they say that their previous roommate was neither firm nor sensitive. Can we have a deposit? And he's like, oh, yeah, I can, uh, you know, I could. Yeah, I'm a, I got a. You know, I don't know if we could. Yeah, no, that's a. And he just like fumbles over everything he's trying to say because now the really hot Stanley. women are right there and they're flirting with him. And he like Stanley.exe crashes basically. Yeah. And this is when Mr. Beetle shows up and he's also really glitchy because these guys have been operating for a long time. They've had no maintenance and now they are failing. I do have to say. If this is like a hundred years later or 50 years later or longer or whatever, it is like kudos to their engineering quality. That they're still working. That so much of these systems are still functional. Yeah. So got to give them a hand there. 
Yeah. No, it's but it's also a very eerie way of pointing out to the audience that this stuff is old and abandoned. Right. And they are interacting with it now, which means that there's, there's no, no one, real people. There's no one to turn it off. Controls. Yeah. If something goes wrong. Yep. So Stanley ends up falling down in the ratings and then girl time is canceled and CG pops oh, up. Oh no. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. Y- you're shit at this. <laughs> and Stanley goes, give me another chance. I can be really funny if I want to be. He can. It's true. Not his forte, but there are moments. And then we cut to 790 who is on a talk show and he's just like, no, I only want to talk about Zev. I, I need Zev. Can someone please bring out Zev? Where is Zev? Which and is not at all the, like the Love Liner episode. The characters on the characters on 790's show are glitching more than the characters in Stanley or Zev's show. Right. And I because think they're they each have one line that they just repeat. I think they're waiting for 790 to give them input. And oh, because so they're just, just going with their canned response because yeah, he's not He's not participating okay. in the talk show. Yeah. Because they bring on a guy, they're like, oh, yeah, it's time for Nock Ima is his name. And 790 is like, okay, cool, where's Zev? And he goes, it's really great to be here on your show. And he's like, yeah, okay, but where is Zev? And he goes, it's really great to be here on your show. Like, no, I want Zev. Where the fuck is Zev? It's really great to be here on your show. And he's doing like right. robot motion, which all these actors are doing a great job mm-hmm. being like glitchy android people when we cut to stanley and it turns out he's in like general hospital now (laughs) yeah uh morning television is what they refer to it as but he's definitely in a soap opera and apparently stanley is trying really hard to be funny and he walks up to this person who's like in bed and she goes does your wife know about our passionate love and our wonderful terrible secret while organ music plays in the background and Stanley's like, actually, she said, uh, we could do the passionate love thing, like, right now. Like, we could do it right now. And the other nurse goes, but you're needed in surgery. And then the wife shows up, and she's really glitchy, too. She actually has, like, electricity coming out of her neck. And she stabs at his orange-haired mistress while she's saying, like, I'll always love you, Stanley Tweedle. And then the ratings fall again. And Heartbreak Hospital gets canceled just like girl time. Oh, no. So Stanley got canceled twice. Let me go back to Zev. And CG tells her, you're getting excellent ratings and you're entitled to your showcase of our your many talents. It's the Zev show. And it's Zev and a bunch of gold bedazzled and super stacked gentlemen. And she's like, hello, everybody. And hello, boys. I love that this is all working out for Zev. Oh, yeah. Everyone else is now in mortal danger. But since Zev is the one who wanted to be in the first place, it's all working out for her. Yeah. Great. She's learning nothing. This is going to play out really well for us later. And this is when we find out who is giving the ratings. Because we zoom out and turn and we see a bunch of heads in boxes yeah that's not that's not dystopian at all no with like a mo- like a laughter monitor over their mouth yeah they just have a green or red light yeah on top of their box and uh yeah it's literally a disembodied head which hey if you think about it these are the last surviving members of a dead civilization yep so they may have been decapitated and used as a uh, cheap AI model for <laughs> yeah. generating ratings. But that allowed them to survive the end of uh, everything. End of both civilizations. Yeah. This is reminding me of something, and I can't think of what. Maybe it'll come to me. Heads in boxes. It's not like we don't watch a lot of weird shit. Like, I haven't seen head in a box like this before. But I just, this is, this is, what, this is what Lex does really well is take a commentary Mm -hmm. and just take it all the way. We're not just talking about ratings and the stupidity of ratings wars and the arbitrariness of 
like a studio audience determining whether a show gets canceled and or the, whether like, it continues. Reductionist measurement of the performance as does it make me laugh or not? Right. That's exactly what and it's then about. And using that same measurement for all of these different shows that the characters are in. Yeah. And then it's saying that the critics who get to decide whether a show gets canceled or not are literally just heads in boxes with a green light or a red light. Yeah. Yeah. That they're not even people. They're just reduced to the basics of did we like it or did we not like it, which is how I feel about a lot of television that gets made now. Mm -hmm. Like they made that show called Lady Jane and I watched, watched it and really enjoyed it. And I heard nothing about it. The marketing had nothing to do with what it was actually about. About It was totally mismarketed, totally allowed to just completely disappear. It's a great show. It's really funny. And yet they canceled it almost immediately because it got no viewership. Of course it got no viewership. You didn't even try. You didn't even try to put it out there or they had that Willow television show. Yep. Which they did a little bit of marketing for. They did marketing for it. They aired it. It was up for like the entirety of the catalog. They did episode by episode. Mm -hmm. And once it was all out and the entire show was available, it was available for like a month. And then they pulled it completely and never put it back up again. Yep. Because it didn't get a lot of streams. Well, okay. But you already put the money into producing it. Leave it up. Yeah. Give it, you got to give these things time to build. It doesn't work the way it used to, where all of a sudden things would become a smash hit. There are like 170 different streaming channels that are all producing their own content. Roku Channel is making their own content now. They made a Spiderwick Chronicles television show. <laughs> you got to give me time. People can't stream everything simultaneously, but if it's like, oh, that wasn't a smash hit, it didn't make it on. You know, nobody's making memes about that on TikTok and Instagram. So I guess it's not going to go viral. Time to cancel it. Like we've all been reduced to the like content that we absorb through the size of our phone screen. Like we're yeah. all actually just heads in boxes. And it's just, did I watch the reel? Did I not watch the reel? Yep. Anyway, that's why this show is still good is because the commentary that they made, because they took it so far, stays relevant. The basis for this, the ratings war, is a thing that doesn't happen anymore, but... Well, it still kind of happens, but it's... In a different form. It's like lingering. Yeah. It's not... Um, like, we were talking about The Wastelands, the book, yeah. in the Dark Tower series, and... There's this monorail train that has, it's this like AI brain with this huge like, you know, data center under the city yeah. that it runs on. And it has gone completely wacko nuts because it was built, like it was an AI that was trained to operate in this environment of a big city with lots of people traveling and and it's intelligent and it likes to interact with the passengers, but the world has moved on. Yeah. And the people aren't traveling anymore and its environment has completely changed, but its rules for how it interacts with the world or how it perceives the world have not changed. And so it's gone crazy. Yep. And similarly... A lot of the rules that are used to um, I don't know, measure the performance of of content, yeah, on on screens, on the internet, streaming, whatever, they're still lingering from the '90s, right? Where well, we need business metrics right now, like immediately, we need synchronous metrics, but. The viewing experience is not synchronous anymore with broadcast television. Right. So they need to overhaul how they measure market performance of like media. But they're still using this old outdated method. And so it's not working anymore. Right. And so it's kind of dysregulated until somebody 
figures out or convinces the rest of the the industry, whatever, to say, hey, uh, adjust how you're measuring performance. Please. Please. Right. Because what happens is eventually people don't trust television shows anymore. Right. I'm not going to invest my time in watching an entire season of a television show only to find out is it was it's already canceled and it just came out and now it ended on a cliffhanger and I'm never going to get a resolution for it. I'm yeah. not going to keep doing that over and over again. I'm just going to stop watching new television. At least that's how my brain works. Right. Like they made the Time Bandits television show. And we watched a couple of episodes and it was really funny and it's already canceled. Who? Or they made Ma, Our Flag Means Death. And we did get three seasons of Our Flag Means Death. And it was really popular, but they were like, well, not popular enough. And they canceled it. And there was a huge like gra grassroots movement to try to keep it going. And they were like, mm, not enough. Yeah. And we just can't judge television shows based on viewership data anymore. Not like, and they do it within a certain period of time of being released. Right. It's like, so for podcasts, if you want to get on Apple's charts, you have to do it within a certain ap amount of time of releasing your first episode. Right. And, and if, if you, you don't, don't get, if you don't get the numbers within the first day, I think 30 of, days, within 30 days of releasing, if you don't your first get the episode, numbers within the first 30 days, you don't get on the charts and you don't get that chance back because now like we celebrate our two year anniversary next month, our two year anniversary of podcasting. And we, I'm sorry to say we did not make it on the charts. <laughs> oh, we didn't. Well, not for, not Apple, not the Apple podcast, the, the Apple podcast, like oh, the, okay. the, uh, anyway, pretty much the only people who do anymore are celebrities because yeah. now celebrities are doing podcasts, which is a whole other kettle of fish that I don't want to talk about, but like, these are actors. They already do television or movies. I, I can already find you and listen to what you have to say. Yeah. Like, get, get, this is. Podcasts are for people like us who can sit and talk about stuff. And then we can talk to friends who want to hear about us talk about Lex too. Yeah. Anyway, it's not the point. The point here is that is dumb. That I can never get on the charts now. What if we start becoming really successful? What if people discover us and all of a sudden we have thousands of streams per episode? It won't matter. I can never get on the chart. Yeah. And it's uh, ridiculous, honestly. That we only, it's like the idea that the only time you can ever be successful in your life is that you're like late teens, early 20s. And if you don't hit it by then, then fuck you, you're done. You might as well just die now. Yeah. Because your life is over, which is so not true. Anyway, I have gone on a tangent. And if you let me go down the, you only have a certain window of time to accomplish this thing. And if you don't, then fuck you, it's all over. I'll never stop because I think that that is the most toxic thing that we perpetuate in our culture is that you have a window and when the window closes, it's gone. And so I'm going to not talk about that anymore because I'm going to talk about it for hours if I'm allowed to, because you get that as a woman, you get that as a mother, you get that as just a person who is not in her twenties anymore. And I hate it. I hate it every time it pops up. So anyway, we come back to 790. Because 790 is still on his talk show. He actually gets more time to try to be successful than anybody else. Right. And this woman walks out, like another guest on his show. And it's actually the same android as pay, played in the Girl Time episode. Yep. And she goes, I have nice breasts. And he goes, I mean, technically, yeah, you have breasts, but they aren't as good as Zev's. And I want the Zev. And the ratings continue to fall, of course, because you're not actually participating in anything. Right. And then we cut to the Lex where apparently the TV is playing on Kai's cryo chamber monitor. For reasons. For reasons. And I have to think, I like to think, I'm going to think, that this is the Lex trying to save them. Yeah, this is the Lex defending Stanley or monitoring the safety of its crew. Right. Well, because without Stanley, it's dead in the water. Right. So he needs to protect his key holder. So 
Anyway, Stanley walks into this clown show wearing a giant diaper. <laughs> and like, it's funny. The diapers are funny, right? But I'm, I'm ready for the next step in Stanley's character where he's less the object of ridicule. Like, just straight satire ridicule. ridicule. Right, because when he gets, like, teased enough, he gets a backbone. Right. And he stands up for himself. But, like, he has to get beat down for a while before he'll stand up for himself. Right, and I'm ready for, as a show, for us to move past the ha-ha-he-he, he, Stanley's the most ridiculous character, when clearly he's not. But this is, you know, he walks onto the clown show wearing a giant diaper. And the clown calls him diaper, like, that's his name. And he's like... Makes some joke about boom boom and his. He's like, mommy. "Do you like which? Do you like better, balloons or making a big boom boom in your tummy?" Bummy, bummy, That's and right. smacks bummy. him on the ass. And Stanley doesn't like it, so he's like, "I don't like doing either. This fucking sucks." And Farty the clown, which is what his name is, goes, "Come on, diapers, don't be such a big baby." And but all the kids chime in. Stanley has finally reached his limit. There is one, and he's reached it. And he yells at Farty and then decapitates one of the android kids. Because if there's anything that Stanley will do when he gets really pissed off, it's uh, punch the heads off of things. Punch 790's yeah. head, punch this android kid's head. And then CW pops up. Actually, sorry, not the CW. <laughs> Brady and Slip. CG pops up. And he's like, too bad, Stanley Tweedle. Your ratings don't qualify you for a morning show. He's like, good, I don't want to be on a fucking morning show. They still have not realized that there are actual stakes to this. Right. They are in a post-apocalyptic wasteland that used to be some sort of TV world attraction. Everyone is dead. There are actual dead bodies on the ground, and they're like, wow, this is probably fine, and there are zero stakes. This is so safe. Even though they have never encountered anywhere yet that is actually zero stakes. Anyway, he gets sucked through the floor, and then we got to Zev. And we get a Zev musical number. And we haven't gotten a musical number in a while. Zev's having a great time. Yeah. And I'm wondering if it's the guy who wrote this episode who did all of the musical numbers in the first season. Mm. Lev Grossman. Did I make that up? Uh, Lev Grossman is the author who wrote The Magicians. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) What's the name Uh, of the guy? Lex Gigaroff. Yeah, Gigaroff. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Other one. The other one. Because he wrote this episode, so he must have written the musical number. And we had a lot of musical numbers in the first, in the first season, Lex part one, the the movies. Remember when they're on, uh, they're on the Brun and G home world and we have the whole musical number. Yeah, there is all the music. And then when they go places, like the dangerous thing that they're participating in usually involves some music because they make it fun. Right. And I have a feeling I was he just was trying to recall uh, a specific situations when they were on the Lex. <laughs> oh, I, I don't, don't think there's been any musical. Yes, stuff there on has. The Lex. Stanley conducted the brains in the ballad oh, okay. of Stanley. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I have to imagine that the creators were more involved in the movies than they have been since it got picked up as like a network television show. Yeah. So this was a callback to OG Lex, which we had, oh, like six episodes ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she goes, I'm a little bit of lizard and a whole lot of girl. And then bubbles start falling around them. And she's like, yeah, I love the Zev show. And then we cut back to the ratings people and they're laughing and enjoying her show. And we find out that some of them are actually now just skulls. Skulls. Because whatever was keeping them alive as just heads has failed. Which, again, kudos that these systems are keeping these decapitated heads alive for however many decades slash centuries since the collapse. We don't know how long it's been. This is a little silence in the library, actually. Hey, who turned out the lights? <laughs> so CG explains to Stanley that he accepts a certain amount of risk. He accepted a certain amount of risk when he be- when he joined the TV world attraction, and he will now become a permanent member of the studio audience. And Stanley's like, oh, yeah, I don't think so, actually. I- I'm out of here. And then he ends up getting electrocuted. Which it has to be more than just electrocution, because when it happens to him and it happens to Zev, they're both... L- like loopy yeah and 
Not yeah, just sedated. hate. Something happens that yeah. makes him unable to fight back. Yeah, it must be some kind of brain. So, uh oh. Stanley's about to lose his head. Uh oh. Oh, no. Because this is the specialty show where we get to watch one more contestant bite the dust. You mean scumbag. Yeah, and we get this script three times. Four times? Three times. Because every single person gets this script. What are we going to do with this scumbag? Oh, did you hear something? Yeah, I think it was my stomach because it's close to lunch. Right. Which kudos to them for sticking with the the, the shtick of these right, being it, androids that are just acting out their right, programming. Them, like knowing that... A mainstream audience is going to get tired of the repetition. They still thought, okay, but this this it, is the concept of this story. It fits the concept. We have right. to do what fits the concept. Yeah. And so they're catering to the integrity of the narrative rather than shallow entertainment for a mainstream audience. Yes, we should never accuse Lex of being shallow entertainment for a mainstream audience. <laughs> I get it. No, yeah, yeah, I get where you're going. They, they they stuck to the script. It works. And we go back to the ship and the ship being Lex. And Kai wakes up. Lex wakes up Kai. Yeah, let's go with that. That's our headcanon. Uh, because Stanley is now in real danger and Kai must wake up like, uh God again. Damn it. God again. damn it. He must just long for the day when he wakes up and they're like, hey, we just wanted you to come sit with us while we and had breakfast. just last episode, they said, uh, Stanley said, next time we're bringing you along as a bodyguard. And he goes, I am uniquely suited for that, Stanley. Like, yes, please fucking do that so I can keep you out of danger instead of having to get you out of danger. But then they didn't. Right. Correct. Again. And just like I'm ready for the Stanley evolution into something besides the object of ridicule, I'm ready for the Kai evolution into something that isn't just the deus ex machina to get them yeah. out of the the impossible situation they've gotten themselves into. I'm enjoying this. Don't get me wrong. I really like this episode. I'm enjoying Lex a lot. I am interested to see if where we go from here. Mm-hmm. And they are actually painting like some kind of a solution on Stanley's neck because he's about to get his head cut off so he can be part of the like laugh track, part of the ratings group. The ratings board. The uh, Nielsen ratings board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Zev is actually still on the Zev show and she is now telling her story on the Zev show and she's explaining her backstory to the sound of a laugh track. So she's staying saying stuff like, you know, I was I was in the wife bank and I finally got chosen and I got to go to the church and he called me a cow and everybody laughs because the only thing that matters for the ratings is comedy. Right. No depth, which feels like another layer of commentary about what like, oh, we we produced four episodes that were kind of funny, but kind of deep. But the only thing we're known for at this point is our comedy. So when we try to do something that's deeper, y'all don't like it. Right. And that's on you, not on us. There's more kind of engage more kinds of engagement than just laughter slash amusement. Right. And she says Stanley is nice enough in his own way. He just does nothing for me sexually speaking, which technically he should, considering my libido. And then she goes, Kai, on the other hand, is another story. And Xenia is crushing this. Mm -hmm. She's like crying. All of this is a very believable emotional moment that Zev is having where she's like, I'm this thing that I was brought up to be a good wife. And then I had my body turned into something that wants all the time. And neither one of these things has gotten me what I wanted. I didn't get a husband. I don't have a lover. I'm unbelievably sexy for no reason. And she's sad about it. <laughs> I mean, it's a, she's in kind of a, a sad situation. Mm -hmm. And her only alternative is Stanley. And she doesn't like Stanley like that. 
and she's pouring her heart out on the Zev show. She goes, it's not easy being programmed to love and then never finding it. And then she goes, I guess pretty girls can be lonely too. Okay. Sure they can. And then the ratings meter goes. Yeah, because she's not being funny. She's being real. No, real. Fuck real. Get out of here. Tell a joke. Go back to go back to singing and dancing. Meanwhile, 790 is still on his original talk show. And he starts there must screaming be some for amount Zev of engagement again. just because he's a robot head. And there, there's some novelty to that. Or or they didn't want to have him go through multiple shows. They didn't want to figure out what else he could do. So yeah. he ends up getting canceled finally. And Kai starts out in girl time. He must just walk straight in. And mm-hmm. he avoids the bucket of shit, unlike Stanley. And then he begins replaying each episode that Stanley went through. And usually just responding with one line and then walking off. Yeah, and they're like, who are you? And he goes, where's Stanley Tweedle? And they're like, hello, where's Stanley Tweedle? (laughs) I love this joke. (laughs) And they're like, it's time to be funny. And he's like, I am not funny. And then Kai walks past them all and into, like, past them and through the door. Because even Mr. Beetle comes out and does the thing where he threatens him with the broom. And he just keeps walking past. And then he goes through the door and he ends up in the hospital. And they're like, doctor, where's Stanley Tweedle? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I love you where Stanley Tweedle <laughs> and he goes I am not sentimental and then he walks through the next door like fuck all of this <laughs> and then uh, we cut to 790 who is on like a spin the wheel show and he's just like Zev I want Zev and his ratings crash immediately this time and then we cut back to Kai who is now in the farty the clown episode and he starts to say I am not because he does the, what do you like, balloons or making boom boom in your bummy again? And then Kai goes, I am not. And then he pauses and goes, actually, I remember having a fondness for balloons. And he bounces the balloon a couple of and times. And then walks off. Which I'm sh- I really hope. We got some background. I hope, I hope in my heart that this was Michael McManus just being like, I don't want to, I think it'd be funnier if I mixed this up. Right. Just one time break the pattern. Yeah. Yeah. And it is because he's like, oh, I like balloons. And then he's like, oh, OK, that was a nice moment. And he continues walking <laughs> and he pushes Stanley out of the way just as they cut his head off. And so they end up cutting Kai's head off instead of Stanley's head. So clearly this is fine. This isn't even the fifth time he's had his, cut, his <laughs> head cut off in order to save them. At this point, they're not even like, no, Kai. They're like, oh, sup, Kai. Oh, whew. Oh, save, thanks for saving me, man. And he goes, I suggest you try to find Zev. And then his head gets whisked away and his body falls down through the floor. Yep. And then Stanley's like, oh, shit, because he's now loose in the simulation. Right. Because they don't, they don't recognize that there's another person there. They did the thing they were supposed to do, programming end. Except the guy turns to what is the camera and goes, now that's entertainment. Join us next time on the specialty show. And then Kai drops into one of the boxes and we see Zev stuck on an exercise show where she's just biking on a bike. And I love all of these sets because this is Mm -hmm. all clearly just like a curtain in the background. Yeah. And then like a thing in the front because they were like, oh, God, we need so many sets for this episode. We have $60 and we spent 15 of it on cocaine. What are we supposed to do? Uh, I don't know. I have an exercise bike in my car. I was getting ready to sell it. Bring that in. She's going to be on an exercise show. I just love this so much. And Kai goes, Zev, like, aha, I found you. So Stanley is wandering around the back area of the studio. And well, Kai picks up on the shtick immediately immediately and starts laughing continuously at Zev. And then 790 pops in next Which to him. She's like, ha ha, ha 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 ha. Yeah. Oh, Zev, you're so funny. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Michael McManus literally showed up for a sandwich every day for these for the last <laughs> five episodes. He'd be eating a sandwich while everybody did everything and then like, okay, time for Kai. And he's like, all right, here we go. He would walk in for 15 minutes, do his entire role, and then leave. So he came there like for the lunch break. And yet, he does such a good job with Kai. Yeah. 
where he's supposed to be like, ha, 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 like laughing. But instead, he's Kai laughing. He's like, yeah. ha, 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 Unless ha. this is that just is Michael so McManus's funny. personality. I don't, maybe. I don't think so. But maybe. <laughs> if it is, it works. <laughs> so Stanley ends up wandering around the back studio and he gets back in the area with Farty. And then he pops one of the balloons and shoves it in Farty's mouth because Stanley's shit meter is at maximum. Yeah. And he glitches Farty out. And then he continues because it goes, congratulations, Stanley, you've qualified to move up in the ratings. And he goes, wow, fucking great. And walks on. And meanwhile, Kai, as a rating head, is like, come on, everybody, cheer for Zev. Ha, 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 <laughs> Doing the most. He's ahead right now. He's got to rely on Stanley. And to his credit, he does trust Stanley to save Zev. Yeah. Because otherwise he would have let Stanley die and he would have gone to save Zev himself. Right. So he is willing to incapacitate himself and put their entire fate in Stanley's hands because he's well aware that Stanley will get the job done. And he does. So 790 is finally in the specialty show. He has finally percolated all the way down. Mm-hmm. And they're like, do you have any final words? And he goes, yeah, Zev, 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 Zev. <laughs> and then they quote cut his head off. They can't cut his head off because he's just a right. head. So they just he doesn't even get put in a box. No, he gets set beside Kai. Probably because he wouldn't fit in the box. Mm. And they were like, well. Yeah, because there's the things next to their ears. Yeah. speakers. Yeah. So they're in quite a small box, these actors with their heads in there. And then they have the 790 prop. And it doesn't fit in the box. So he mm-hmm. just sits next to Kai, which is fine. So Kai starts laughing and he 790 appears next to him. And he's like, Kai, is that you over there? And he's like, yeah, 790. Don't you think Zev is really funny? Ha, 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 ha. All the, all the heads are like, yeah, it's not working. <laughs> this is terrible. Because she's just biking like, I want to go back on the Zev show. I want the men back. So she ends up opting out of the exercise. She's like, you know, the thing about being a love slave is I already have a perfect body and it doesn't really matter if I exercise. It just doesn't make any difference. So instead of watching me exercise, why don't you guys watch me relax? And so she gets out and sits in a chair next to the bike. Meanwhile, Stanley is still moving back through all of the clips. The sets. Yeah, the, yeah, the sets. And the wife shows back up because now he's in the general Heartbreak hospital. Heartbreak hospital. Heartbreak hospital. <laughs> And she has Kai's body, like they changed up the android body because she was broken, remember? Right. And so the machine tried to fix her by putting a new body. And the only body they've gotten in a really long time is Kai. So now it's her head on Kai's body. So Stanley just punches the wife's head off of Kai's body. It's like Stanley's... (laughs) Punching heads off. It's Stanley's one move, okay? And he excels at it. And he goes, sorry, babe, I just want you for your body. (laughs) Which gets some laughs. <laughs> this is a good moment. Because then he has to pick the body up and run off with it. And I want to know, did they have multiple versions of this body? Because we've used this body a lot. Mm-hmm. And we clearly have the one that is like a person in a headless suit. And then we probably have one that's silicone. Because sometimes when he flops around, it looks really realistic. But yeah. if that whole body is silicone, that's a heavy ass body. Right. And then Stanley has to pick it up and run off with it, which he does. But then CG goes, Stanley, you're moving up in the ratings. And he goes, yeah, someday I'm going to be a big star, right? (laughs) I love that when he didn't care, every time when he finally gives up and he just does what he wants to do and acts like himself, it's successful every single time. Right. But he's highly masking. (laughs) Yes. But it's a maladaptive mask and he can't take it off until he is literally so fucking over it that he has to take it off. Yeah. And then he starts punching and people's heads off, off and being like the hero of the hour mm-hmm. every single time. But he can't go straight there. He has to go through. It's kind of like the Power Rangers. Oh, where yeah. Every time they would try to defeat the monster. They have to go through the steps of escalation. Yeah. They can't just summon the Zord, the... Zords? Zords, yeah. They can't just summon the... I think that's what they're called. Well, Zordon is the guy in the tube. Right. That just seems repetitive to have them called the Zords, but I think they are. 
It's been a really long time. It has. So they can't just summon the giant animal Robot. shaped robots and just step on the bad guy, which is clearly the most efficient solution. They have to kung fu battle. They have to the kung fu guy. battle. And then we have to go through the animation where he gets bigger. And then we have to beat him up with the giant robots. Every time. Same thing with Stanley. It's fine. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. Stanley's my favorite character. Did not think Stanley was going to be my favorite character going into this. Mm -hmm. Currently, Stanley is my favorite character. So finally, Zev ends up on the specialty show. Because she just wants to go back on the Zev show and she's over everything else. So she's like, great, fine. Yeah, no, I failed this one. Can you put me back on the Zev show? Because she's the only one at this point who doesn't realize that the, the consequences for failure are death. So they take her all the way down to the specialty show area. She gets like loopy zapped or whatever they do, drug, electricity drugged. And she's like, Zev show. <laughs> and then Kai pops. No, not Kai. Sorry. No, no. Stanley pops out of a, a door holding Kai's body. And then he holds Kai's arm up and <laughs> shoots the bad guy with Kai's arm. Which who knew that it hadn't. Like a button on the outside. Kai's body can act independently of Kai. We know that because that's mm -hmm. how they defeated the people. Well, on maybe the... Kai did trigger the brace that's instead what of Stanley. That's what I'm thinking happened because Stanley just aimed. Yeah. Because otherwise anyone could grab his wrist and deploy what is actually the most powerful weapon in the known universe. <laughs> the most powerful destructive, destructive force in two universes. <laughs> It's uh, Kai's multi-tool that he keeps on his arm. Is it a grappling hook? Is it a projectile weapon? It's all these things and more. <laughs> so once again, Stanley has saved the entire party from Zev's foolish behavior. Thank you, Stanley. We appreciate you here on the Dead Do Not podcast. So after he saves her, they end up finding the room full of audience members so that they can save 790 and Kai's head. And so Kai's body walks over and reattaches his head, which is why I'm like, he didn't need to carry the body. He could have just grabbed the body's hand and the body mm -hmm. would have run after him. But it's fine. It, it's fine. And they're all, this has to feel, to me, this would feel terrible. They don't seem all that broken up by the heads in boxes, but they also are from a very brutal civilization. <laughs> right, right. They're from the like League of 20,000 Worlds or whatever. Yeah. Which was, yeah, extremely brutal yeah. and dystopian. And this is, oh, oh, okay. I mean. They keep the heads in jars. Stanley sent people to a place where you had a sham of a trial and then you got rolled up to a plate that had tiny little saws in the shape of your organs that cut your organs out. Alive. Alive. So they're like, well, this is weird. But to me, this room is terrifying. Not only are they all in these little boxes, but they're all talking. Mm -hmm. So it's a room full of like softly muttering heads in boxes. Being forced to watch television, uh, television that they don't get to choose. Except now there's nothing on the TV, so they're all just whispering. So right. It's like a room full of it's. It, I this is creepy as fuck. Okay? <laughs> a this, room full of insane heads. I mean, if you take a step back from this plot for two seconds, this is terrifying shit. Okay, mm -hmm. this is two planets that completely destroyed themselves over TV ratings, and this is like. If 2,000 years from now, somebody stumbled on Disney World and ended up in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, but in an effort to make the Pirates of the Caribbean ride better, we had like put actual people heads on all of the bodies. Yeah, like partially reanimated human bodies. Yeah. Yeah. And then they came alive and tried to kill everybody. Actually, that would probably be a pretty good short story. Anyway, so... The room full of muttering heads happens, and then we leave. And the Lex just flies off. They're like, well, that was weird. We'll just leave them to it. Because oh, I thought, okay, they'll probably blow this place up. So nobody else gets just, trapped in just it. Just because they want to get some closure, but also 
um, end the horror that is the the ratings wall. Yeah. Uh, but they just leave. Right. Yeah. And I wanna... Until Mantrid shows up. And eats the whole fucking planet again. This is like his fifth planet? Fourth he ate planet? Potato Ho. Yep. He ate the Love Liner. Yep. No, no, they blew up the Love oh, Liner. Oh, yeah. He ate um, the hospital ship. Yes. So he's eaten two things. We actually didn't see him in the Love Liner episode. And we didn't see him in Laika. No, we did because he ate potato hoe. Yeah. I don't know. At this point, he just, just assume he eats anything that they interact with immediately after they leave it, but not while they're on it. Right. So and we don't know how long it was between the Lex leaving and Mantrid eating, eating the it? planet. Not long. It doesn't look like very well, long. It, it doesn't look like very long. I'm just thinking... How far behind them is Mantrid? Yeah, or I think he's probably intentionally behind them at this point. Mm. Because clearly he could catch up. He can eat entire planets. I don't know. I'm waiting for this showdown. Like, how is this going to go down? Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure we'll find out. I'm not sure, actually. We may or may not find out eventually how that go, how that plays out. When we come back to Inside Lex, and Kai is getting back into his cryo chamber, like, see you next crisis, y'all. And Sev brings up that being up there alone on stage made her feel really special. Mm -hmm. And that's why she felt like she could share so much. And Stanley is like, yeah, but that was all artificial. None of those people were really alive. And Kai goes, being alive isn't everything. And then cryo lid pod lid drop. (laughs) (laughs) It's the Kai version of the mic drop. You can't argue with him because he's just like, that's not everything. Frozen. Can't yeah. argue back. So Stanley walks away and then the Lex flies slowly away. And that's the end of the episode. And I want to point out one like major plot hole here. Mm-hmm. Is once Stanley was loose, he was able to just move in and out of all of the different sets. Yeah. And Kai was able to move from set to set without actually being transferred from set to set. Right. Which means that at any point in the initial part when they got fed up, they could have just walked out the door and left. Right. It wasn't until they ended up in the specialty show and they got like electro drugged that they got into a situation where they couldn't escape. But even then, once he walked away, he was able to just walk off. Right. So, I mean, they were in danger, but a part of the danger was their own. Like. Cooperation. Cooperation. Yeah. Not, I mean, maybe not realizing that the end result of this was getting their head cut off. Right. If they'd known that, they would have made a larger effort to leave. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this reminded me a lot of the Black Mirror episode. Did you ever watch any Black Mirror? Yeah, I've watched a few. There's the one where you have to have a certain rating on social media. Oh, yeah. The social credit score. Yeah. In order to, like, get a good apartment, get a good job. Mm -hmm. But you have to have a good apartment and a good job to get a good rating on social media. That's exactly what this felt like. This was, like, the 1999 version of that Black Mirror episode. Mm -hmm. You got to get good TV ratings because there wasn't social media. Right. And I that episode has stuck with me. I've forgotten a lot of what I've seen on Black Mirror, but that episode, every time I think about influencers... And see the shit that influencers get away with. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, yeah. Because their social media rating is high enough. Wild. Anyway, that's another episode of Lex in the Can. Well, that was a pretty good episode. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. It yeah. definitely felt like a commentary. I feel the same way I feel when I watch Dead Issue, which is I wish I could go back and read contemporary criticism of the show to try to figure out who they're talking to. Because it feels like they're talking to somebody. Yeah. But that's lost in time. The references are lost because whatever contemporary critics were saying didn't get kept. Alas. So I guess that's a good place to leave it. What are you hoping for in the next episode? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm more boobs. Whatever. More boobs. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> so I worship his shadow. May his shadow fall upon you. Until next time, friends. Bye. Bye. 
A big part of the fun is in choosing just the right show for you. And the more fun that you have on that show, the better your ratings. And the better your ratings, the more fun it is for you and all of us. Hey, why not? Some players may fail to draw high ratings and will become permanent members of our studio audience. 